It's 1.30. The October 17th meeting of the Oklahoma City Traffic and Transportation Commission is called to order. Commissioner Witcher. Present, sir. Commissioner Martin. Here. Commissioner Kula. Here, sir. Commissioner Hale. Here. Commissioner Shuline. Here. Commissioner Jenkins. Here. Ward 8 is vacant. Commissioner Clayton. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Clayton, would you say a blessing for us, please? Let's bow our heads in the attitude of prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We come this afternoon in thanksgiving, thanking you for the blessings that you bestowed upon us. And let us ever be mindful that you are the source of our need. We pray that everything that we do here this afternoon will meet with thy divine approval. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. This we ask in our name and I pray. Amen. Thank you. Item number two is approval of the minutes from the September 19th meeting. Do I have a motion? Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Clayton, seconded by Commissioner Jenkins, to approve the minutes from the September 19th meeting. Further discussion? Comments? Could I have your votes, please? Approved unanimously. Thank you. Item number three is the report on licensed taxi and wrecker services. Sergeant Mark McKayla with the Vehicle for Hire Office. Uh, during the last quarter, we inspected, or I'm sorry, we issued 58 new Vehicle for Hire driver's permits. Uh, we had 75 renewals and 39 drivers transfer between companies. Uh, we, had, we only had seven complaints, and none of those were from citizens. Those were all complaints that were drivers against other drivers, which is highly unusual and outstanding. Um, we only issued five citations. One of those citations was for drivers smoking inside the taxi, and the other four were just drivers that had allowed their permits to expire. Uh, we inspected 22 vehicles for hire and had no failures, so it was a really good quarter. You know, one thing that I'm concerned about, what is this complaint between the drivers? What are we talking about? Um, as the drivers line up in the, in the taxi stands, um, you'll have a driver that feels he was cut off or a fare was stolen from him, and that's usually something that can just be worked out okay. know, between me and the two drivers without any enforcement action being taken. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant. Item number four is the consent docket. Is there anyone wishing to speak on an item, wishing to speak against an item on the consent docket? Do I have a motion to approve? Sir, I'd like to make a motion to approve the, uh, the uh, consent docket. I will second. I have a motion by Commissioner Kula, seconded by Commissioner Witcher to approve the consent docket. Further discussion, comments? Could I have your votes, please? Approved unanimously. Anyone, anyone wishing to speak needs to see Cherry and fill out one of these blue forms and your talk will be limited to five minutes. Item number 5A, the applicant is Discount Shuttle LLC, 12132 Windmill Court, Oklahoma City, 73162. The request is to consider an application for Discount Shuttle LLC for a certificate of public convenience and necessity necessity to operate 40 vehicles in shuttle service.
Is there anyone here representing Discount Shuttle? Um, Larry Lucas. Lucas. If you'd state your name and address, please, Mr. Is, Lucas. Uh, Larry Lucas. I live at uh, 12700 North Council Road. I'm the uh, originating partner of LLC and the general manager. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have with regard to our application. Okay. Could I have staff summary, please? Sure. Uh, Discount Shuttle has provided the complete vehicle for hire application meeting all the city's requirements. Uh, staff recommends approval of the application for the Certificate of Public Convenience and Necessity as submitted. Do I have a motion on 5A? I make a motion for approval. Second. I have a, a motion by Commissioner Martin, seconded by Commissioner Shuline. Further discussion or comments? Mr. Lucas, if you'd step down, I have someone that would like to speak as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Mr. Nijam? My name is Jafar Nijam. I'm the President and CEO of JNK Enterprises, 1310 St. Andrews Drive, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73025. Mr. John, would you raise the microphone, please? Thank you. First of all, I'd like to uh, welcome the new shuttle company. Uh, we have uh, one concern and then two slight objections. The first concern is that Mr. Lucas already owns four shuttle companies in the city of Oklahoma City. After almost a year of deliberations and, and comments and concerns we proved they proved to the commission to the appeal boards that all four were identical blue vans with yellow lettering our concern is all of a sudden same company same owners same officers come up with an entirely different company with a totally different trying to separate themselves with the identity of those four companies after going through the rigmarole of proving 56-24, Clause D doesn't apply to them, only applies to us, to JNK Enterprises. Uh, so I don't understand what the motive is of that. If they wanted to open a fifth company, they should have just painted them blue with yellow lettering, gone about with their business. Discount shuttle could have been blue also. After a year, we proved in the city that they can do that. No one's going to say anything. Our concern, as far as the objection is, on their application, they state over here, transportation of people to and from various locations, including Will Rogers Airport. Are they going to run to and from shuttle, or are they just going to run a taxi company, picking up people from various locations? Is this a shuttle specific like we do to and from? If you call us that, hey, because I'm from Walmart, we tell them, sorry, our shuttles don't do that. We are to and from airport only. Although the logos on their vehicles, when we looked on the computer, in the back window says to and from airport. But the application states from various locations. Various locations make it a taxi. Meter is just a tool. The rate sheet attached to this application, someone's going 10 miles. If they're charging, let's say, $2, that's $20. Calculator is a tool. Fare is $20. What are they specifically doing? That's one. Secondly, they say charter rates are charged for rides anywhere. By any definition, Webster, Oxford Dictionary, and most famous Google, vans don't charter. The closest that comes to it is a bus. That too has to be specifically fitted bus. American Airlines commuter planes don't charter. Charters are done on Citation Gulf Streams, which have special favors that they offer. So what is a charter? Three grandmas ask, we need to go to Walmart on the first of the month. We'd be needing three hours. Would that be charter? Can a GMC Denali, someone says, hey, I'll charter you. 
By definition, that's a charter. We're going to charge them 50. Anyone can do that. You don't even need an, a license. There's nothing in the ordinance about a charter. So what is a charter? When we had launched our companies, we had put in charter. You guys asked us to throw it out. We can't charter. What is a charter? So under that umbrella, we're going to start sending these vans all around Oklahoma City. People are just riding them like normal taxis. And we're going to say, oh, no, this is a charter. Someone's being picked up from Marriott, five people, on New Year's Eve, taken to downtown Bricktown. Once they're done partying, we bring them back. What was that? That was a charter. What would the taxis do in Oklahoma City then? So we're working up this whole water by, by these lane definitions. So our concern is if we could specify on the application before any approval that if we're going to be a shuttle, let's put one word very specifically, to and from airport only. And if we're going to run a taxi company, then let's put it, it's a taxi, so that appropriate ordinances could be applied and every governing body could then follow those procedures and put the law accordingly. Thank you. Comments or questions? Well, I would like to ask the, uh, the uh, actual applicant those uh, two points. Mr. Lucas, if you'd come back to the podium, please. Uh, might I comment on yeah uh, so yeah just just to, uh, just to, uh, two things uh, you know, yeah uh, so the first thing I think was the to and from different locations our service will be to and from Will Rogers Airport okay and then uh, second point was charter service charter service uh, I, I think what we're really uh, again it goes to the definition of what charter service is from time to time we have requests for service coming from the airport for groups in fact happens on a somewhat frequent basis and maybe the word charter is inappropriate for the use of that but it's the designated service from one point to another for example from downtown to the scurvy if there's a group of eight or ten people traveling together or perhaps there are students coming in going to OCU or something like that and yes we would offer to do uh, that kind of service I don't I think it's correct that the ordinance is vague or it doesn't address the issue of what charter service is so, so we'd be happy to modify our application to uh, conform if there's a problem so if I was to call you up and say I'd like uh, I got 10 guys that we need to go from my house to some place to the ballpark right that would be an incorrect use of your service that we would not do that with this. But company. if I said I have ten guys in my house need to go to the airport, can I get picked up? Yes, sir. That would be that would be an appropriate yes. use of a shuttle. Yes. And that's how we define shuttle is from the airport to home or yes. a place. Like if uh, one of the large different uh, companies right. said, "Hey, I got fifty people coming in. Right. Can you be there to pick them up?" Right. That's a shuttle service function. And yeah. it's a it's it's not on your. It's not on that shuttle schedule where you leave from here at every 10 minutes after the hour and do something. Yeah, as, as a practical matter, um, there are other companies that do that on a regular basis of groups of some size for 40 or 50 of them. Okay. And they're very good. They uh, range all the way from Copta to the uh, larger uh, bus services. Okay. They're very active in this area. and. Uh, Frankly, there just isn't that much business that would be fall in this gray area. Okay, so you would modify your application certainly to make sure that it's clear that the to and from is for, from the airport. Yes, sir. To, we have to, to your to map area. Airport. Sorry. Yes. And then the the uh, uh, charter service is mainly uh, special shuttle services right. to and from the airport. Keeping in mind, we're using seven passengers or fewer uh, vehicles. Right. So, uh, you, um, using the word charter covers a broad thing. Cross-country charters, I mean, you know, you, you get caught up in what the definition of a charter with, is. Have I answered your question? Well, it's, it's just that from what I, if I recall correctly about a shuttle, is there's set times that the shuttle will depart the airport. Is 
that how it was defined the last time we talked about shuttle? <coughs> well, I think, as a, as a point of fact, there's effort going on, efforts going on to try to define shuttle to make ch changes in the ordinance. Right. And uh, I think it's going to be a very challenging issue to define what a sh shuttle is. One can make statements about how shuttle is defined in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think when uh, some of these proposed ordinances may, may clear up or, or parts of the uh, ordinance language, is, is that a correct statement? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Neither shuttle nor charter is defined in our ordinance. I'm sorry. I couldn't understand. Neither shuttle nor charter is defined in the ordinance. In the, cur in the current ordinances, it's not defined. Okay. So as far as modifying your application, the to and from means from the airport to yes. wherever the location is where the person yes. needs to be picked up or go. And the, the fact of a charter is mainly a special pickup or something or a special pickup at the airport that's outside of your normal schedule? Is that what that would be? Um, we would satisfy whatever the requirements are under the ordinance. Well, I'm, I, I'm fine with the, the concept of a shuttle in service, picking people up to and from the airport. I mean, that's kind of what, how we look at shuttles. Well, the ordinances don't currently require them to go to or from the airport. They can go anywhere. They can go anywhere. So if I called them up and said, hey, I got five people that need to go from my house to the ballpark. They could pursue into ordinance, but if that's not their business right. strategy, then that would be up to them. But they're not required to go just to or from the airport under the under So the therefore, their, their wording of various locations is appropriate according to the ordinances right. that we have now. It's okay. not prohibited by the ordinances. Okay. Thank you. I would like to address the first point that uh, the commentator made. Uh, the, the company uh, JNK holds five permits for different companies that have been granted over the last 12 months. Be happy to answer any other questions. Further questions? Well, I, would, I guess the question is that uh, why do you feel the need, if you have four companies now, why do you feel the need to start another one? We think there's some new ideas that can be applied to the airport, and with a new company we can put those into effect. There's changes going on at the airport as we're all familiar with. Ideas such as what? I'd, I'd not... I, we have some ideas. We have some ideas about the marketing of our services that would require that are different from what we're presently doing with the other companies. Okay. And I think that's been the same kind of uh, question that is, has come up with regard to the uh, other applicants. Any further comments? Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. Ladies and gentlemen, we in our companies, we welcome all new ideas, but it's, it's ironic that all the new ideas come attached with exactly the same rate sheet which is for the rest of the four companies. And the ideas could have been introduced with the other four color schemes of their companies, which is identical. It didn't have to, they didn't have to separate their entire identity after 30 years with a new color scheme, a new name, new decaling, and a new telephone number, and a new address of the place of business. So I know just like I knew a year back of going back and forth with the commission and the appeal boards, that the motive of that is not here in the traffic commission. This is a five-minute deal. The motive of it is where the business is actually conducted, which is at the airport, where the spots are allocated, where the line is made. That's where the ideas have nothing to do with it. Because if the ideas were new, the rate sheet would be new. 
there'll be something innovative introduced to the traffic commission. If you look at the rate sheet, it's identical to what they're already doing with four different names. Airport Express, Airport Shuttle, Metro Express. So, uh, but we still welcome them. It's, it's good. We should have more. Uh, I wish they had brought something new. Uh, maybe younger people like us, we could have learned something. Having said that, as far as going back to the ordinance, like Ms. Jackson said, if they can go in a shuttle and Mr. Kula calls that, hey, you know what, our family decided we're going to go to Walmart today and we send a shuttle, the question is, what would the taxis do? Then we'll send a shuttle. I've got five companies of shuttles. I've got a huge fleet of 80 plus taxis. Then we'll just interchange them. We don't have a taxi, we'll send a shuttle. We don't have a shuttle, we'll send a taxi. What is the difference then between a shuttle that runs to and from airport on a discounted rate and shares fares versus a taxi that runs on a strict meter and does not share a fare? So if you take a taxi from airport to, let's say, Oak Tree, and you pay $75 for that versus you share a fare and go to Oak Tree and only pay $45. We're now again sitting over here, murking up the water and says, guess what? Basically take anything you like and do anything with it in Oklahoma City. Tomorrow I can have a Harley Davidson and put a three-seater on the side and take anyone to Walmart and say, put your groceries on the side and hop up in the back, here's a helmet. And that becomes a commercial vehicle for hire. We're not setting any boundaries and allocating a difference from a Greyhound, to a taxi, to a shuttle. We're just throwing everything in one basket and saying, go ahead. Limos are the same way. Buy a four, four and a half thousand dollar Lincoln Town car, don't need anything practically. Now you're a limo company. Stand in front of Skirvin, twenty dollars, go to the airport. Which limo goes for twenty dollars? Limo has to offer something to be a limo not just an executive car. All cars are executive. Toyota Avalon now is an executive car. It's about time that if we're going to run this industry, then people who are running it have to offer something to at least demarcate certain boundaries where even the customer can walk out and say, okay, this is a limo, this is a taxi, and this is a share affair shuttle. We're just playing with words over here. And we're saying, go ahead, do what you like. We did that for about a year. Now we're coming back because now it suits their convenience. So we changed the color, we changed the decal, and we're saying we've got some new ideas. Idea is the same, airport is the same, game is the same. It's the same playing field. Thank you. Further questions, comments? Mr. Yeah, Kuchan, I, I got a question. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Well, I, have, I have a comment. Yes, sir. I mean, you came before us with four, I mean, what was good for you and is good for anybody. Absolutely. So if you're complaining against him doing the same thing you're doing, basically. I'm not complaining, sir. Yes, you are. For 27 years, they ran one company, Airport Express. When we came in, all of a sudden that one company became four. We didn't complain. We came in, we said we're one company, J&K Enterprises. You asked us, change the colors. We said, okay. We changed the colors. We came back, we said, could you ask them to change the colors? You said, no, it doesn't apply. We went to the appeal court, appeal court said, no, it doesn't apply. All of a sudden, Article 56-24, Clause D changed. We still said okay, no problem. Now they come back with a totally different color scheme. We're just merely saying, what's the purpose behind that? Have your fifth company keep that blue also with yellow, yellow lettering. Why come up and separate yourself from that identity now? There is a far deeper purpose than just having a fifth company. Bring sixth one, bring seventh one. That's not the purpose. 
there is something else to it. But if you're going to bring a company, let us say, just tell us openly, is it going to be a horse or a donkey? Because what we're getting right now is a mule. Because we don't know, is it a horse or a donkey? Where, where do we crowd them? They're saying we're going to go to various locations. Oh, yeah, and we're Rogers also. Gentleman saying, well, guess what? Now that you're saying this, we'll just go to Will Rogers. But we'll charter it also. Ms. Jackson's saying, well, you don't have to. If you feel like, you can go to Walmart also. I'm asking, can we do that also? Tomorrow when we get a call, hey, go to Walmart. Can I tell my dispatchers, go to the GPS, whatever the vehicle that's closest to the customer settle it. Whether it's a shuttle that says to and from airport only, whether it's a cab, just send the vehicle. Because it's got a city license and it says vehicle for hire. Because we are our business, this is a shuttle. It only runs to and from airport. You will charge a customer X amount of dollars based on that. This is a taxi. It can go anywhere, from anywhere, to anywhere, and make sure when the customer sits, meter is running. Mr. Najam, the, um, as far as addressing the ordinance, I mean, that's, that's something that perhaps this commission can affect later, not today. But you don't find anything that uh, is being proposed by the applicant in the application that, to your knowledge, violates the ordinance, do you? Well, the ordinance states taxis should be taxis, shuttles should be shuttle. Application states well, open if, if, they're, if they're not defined, then it's not a violation of the ordinance. It's not defined. Okay. And it, it's, so that's you, a direct so you, don't, you don't find anything that violates the ordinance? I in, do. In the application? I do. The, the ordinance states, because the ordinance states if it's a shuttle, they don't require five vehicles. If it's a taxi, they require five vehicles. I see your distinction. Now, which one are they? The application says a shuttle. Application says if they're a shuttle, then the premise of the application, probably they need to redo that, put in to and from airport. They're more than welcome. Put the permits, buy the permits from the airport. They're welcome to the airport. Good. So what you're saying is they should not be able to have a charter rate? Well, there's no such thing as charter. Taxis well, can charter. Right, that's what I was going to say. Taxis, I can call up and say, I'd like to get a taxi for six hours. Exactly. And I pay a certain rate, and I go wherever I go, exactly. and after six hours, I'm exactly. dropped back off. Because taxis have it written over there, $24 an hour or $20 an hour charter. or whatever have you. That's a charter. Anytime you book anything for an hour, that's a charter. Book me for an hour. So what you're saying is this is the first time you've seen a shuttle service come in with a charter statement? No, no. There, there has been a concept in Oklahoma City for a charter. I believe they do it in Airport Express also, a charter. The question is whether you're chartering or you're not chartering, what is the route? Is it to and from airport? Well, I'm, no, I'm saying charter just for three hours of service. Three hours of service. Is that currently, besides taxis, done in the city? Yes. By limos? By uh, Paris limo. Right, limos can do that. actually have cha uh, charter buses. Right. Where you, call, where you say, I want three hours, you get a limo, you get yes. something. Uh, yes. But what, what, what I'm asking is, does a shuttle service currently have that function? Their shuttle services, they do. The, yes, Airport Express, Air, Air Sport Express has and, that. And answer to Mr. Lucas's uh, statement: You don't need to charter at the airport. They are all lined up over there. Well, no. If what group what of I'm people asking is, sit so in the shuttles and go. If, if I call Airport Shuttle, yes, and said I'd like to have a van for three hours, yes, they will. Should do anything. I could do they whatever I want. Absolutely. So it's already something that's in, in operation. Yes, has been there for so, a number of so years. This company coming in is asking to do something that's already an established thing yes. out there. Okay. Yes, for a number okay. of years in their company. Okay. So what they're asking is, is nothing new. 
They've been okay. doing it for a number of years. All they've done is change the color of their vehicle. Okay. And it's the same rate sheets. Right. Everything is the same. So I don't know what the new idea and is. It, and, it, and as far as my understanding, that's not a concern of ours, why people want to go into business. They just have to provide the information to get approved. Provide an, and a, they a true, honest statement that, hey, we're to and from airport. This is what we do. Or we're going to go all over. Well, and the commission has said. to decide, hey, which as a shuttle, you said. cannot go all over. Well, you as you just shuttle. said that airport shuttle does right now. Yes. So he, all this company wants to do is what another company is already doing. Yes, which also is owned by them. Well, again, as far as we're concerned, mm -hmm. they're doing something that's already an established practice out yes. in the world. Now, whether it's right or wrong, whether it goes into uh, uh, rules and laws, that's something to be looked at differently. If we mm -hmm. need to define things better, we can look at that later. But this application is just saying they want to do something that somebody else is doing out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Further comments or questions? I'm not, I'm not clear with the motion. Um, I assume we're getting ready to vote. But are we considering amending the motion or are we standing with the uh, I, I will propose that to Commissioner Martin, who was the, who initially made the motion. Is there a, do you wish to withdraw that motion or amend your motion? Or have a vote on that motion? I have a, a motion by Commissioner Martin, seconded by Commissioner shoe line to approve 5a further discussion could I have your votes please approved unanimously thank you item 5b the applicant is Bob Minista I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly Better Business Bureau, 17 South Dewey Avenue, Oklahoma City. The request is to consider, consider a request to remove the two-hour parking time restriction from the inset parallel parking spaces on the west side of South Dewey Avenue between West California Avenue and the alley on, on the north side of the building at 17 South Dewey Avenue. Robert Manesta. If you'd state your name and address for the record, please. Um, Bob Manesta, the President and CEO of the Better Business Bureau, serving Central Oklahoma. Uh, for the purpose of this discussion, 17 South Dewey, Oklahoma City, 73102. First, thanks for considering this. We. Um, we're pleased with the Project 180 development and all the changes that are going on in the city. Uh, and having read the coverage that was presented uh, by your, your staff concerning uh, the changes that we're asking to be made the, to our limit to be removed, our, our simple concern is one of practicality. We have enough spaces for the senior staff members to park on the south end of the building. Uh, there are a number of other employees, some of which are part-time, that use the two-hour limit spaces. Mainly these are college students. We, we have kind of the Chinese fire drill every two hours at the moment because I want them to remain compliant with the rule and move their vehicles. But we also have a possibility, because the Better Business Bureau conducts Lemon Law arbitrations on behalf of several manufacturers, that some of the arbitrations may require the vehicles be left there longer than two hours. So we're really talking about a matter of embarrassment to us should an arbitration run longer than necessary or longer than usual and those vehicles be ticketed because they've exceeded the usual limit. Um, 
or the matter of convenience for the employees not to have to play the game of moving the vehicles every two hours. Uh, in the coverage that was written, there was some discussion uh, of guaranteeing spaces be available for bureau staff. We're not looking for that. Frankly, there's not an issue with finding available parking. Uh, the construction traffic going to the construction of the Devon Edge Energy Tower it is almost nil at this point. We aren't seeing an impact for the availability of parking. We're just looking for that two-hour limit to be restricted so I don't have to worry about our guests for arbitrations or jockeying the staff around. Thank you. Go ahead, staff summary, please. Okay, you've got our uh, comments and recommendation before you. Uh, staff didn't recommend approval of the request because we don't believe that the requested change will necessarily produce any beneficial parking improvements for the applicant. Uh, the parking spaces available for all day use will likely be used, be the first ones used, and are filled every day. And so the probability of their use, be, as far as being regularly available for the applicants, probably fairly low. Because right now, you know, you notice in the report that um, this is going to be directly across the street from the uh, new, from the proposed downtown elementary school, and currently it's across the street from a property which is currently which is being used as a uh, employee parking lot for workers that are building the Devon Tower. So. We left action on this one at the discretion of the commission. Do I have a motion on 5B? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if, uh, if staff doesn't object, uh, I, I would move that we uh, embrace Mr. Menessa's request to uh, remove the two-hour parking limits on the parking. Second. I have a motion and a second. Further discussion, questions of uh, Mr. Manesta or anyone else? Well, I have a concern in regards to how you can ensure that your staff or your clientele will be able to utilize the parking spaces. Oh, I'm not looking for a guarantee that they would be able to utilize it. If someone else occupies the space, that's fine. And if someone needs to move their vehicle, that's fine. Just as a practical matter, we're not having a problem parking our vehicles at the curb at this point. There, there's not much traffic on South Dewey, especially in terms of parking traffic. Um, we just don't, we, we would like to avoid the probability that somebody's going to get a ticket if they don't move their car every two hours. That's all. We're not looking for any guarantees that the slots will be there. Further questions, comments? Mr. Chai, are there typical um, time limit restrictions? Or is there a four-hour parking limit that would typically, or do we stick with 30 minutes, one hour, two hours? Well, typically in the downtown area, most of the, of the uh, time limits are relatively short. It's to encourage turnover. And you see that a lot, especially you know, next to the bigger buildings in the downtown area. You know, in this particular case, the, uh, the parking restrictions that you're seeing on Dewey and like on Sheridan, all of that was approved as part of the, uh, the Film Row Improvement pro Streetscape Project for that area. And that came through the project manager's office after it was discussed with business operators a while back. And so that's why we've got, you know, primarily two-hour parking up and down and on the side streets in the Film Row area. That's the that, the two-hour limitation is kind of a standard for this area right now. Okay. Thank you. Do you own property that could be used or converted to parking? That, that's kind of up for debate. There is an empty lot that we own that has been fenced in. That is another issue for discussion with another committee of the city here at the moment. Uh, we had originally intended to turn that into a parking area. And if the, the plans for the school across the street go ahead, we may try to do some kind of fundraising effort to do that. Uh, given the restrictions and the requirements, that are placed on creating a parking zone, the Bureau can't afford that at this point. We may, if it necessary, we would try to necessitate that, but there's no plan to do that in the immediate future. Any other questions or comments? And the, um, 
is the two hour any time of day or is it during business hours? The two hour restriction. I believe it's all day. Yeah, it's it's all day, but the uh, but typically parking a lot of our the city's parking regulations, like even things talking about meters, they're they're not enforced beyond six o'clock in the evening. So okay. in, in an area like this, I don't I don't think that um, you know the enforcement is going to be an issue question. However, you know when you're considering that you're talking about a business that's open, I mean, what are your ordinary business hours? From eight to five. Yeah, so you, it would it would never impact their. Business. I was wanting to make sure that that we didn't have a a motive of. Of turning over parking in the evening time with a, a no because if, even parking meters in the downtown area aren't enforced after in the evening right. they're not yeah they're not enforced after six o'clock or on weekend or on holidays and holidays also include saturday so basically weekends weekends holidays and after six o'clock thanks any other questions or comments I have a motion to approve item 5B by Commissioner Shuline, seconded by Commissioner Martin. Could I have your votes, please? What, 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 what are we doing? Approve? Or you mean you mean to give risk to remove the two-hour parking? Yes, to approve okay, to, okay. to approve the request. Okay, okay. Isn't that's correct? Yes. The motion is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. It seems like a little thing, but it's a big deal to us. <laughs> Thank you. This takes us to item number six, comments from citizens. Is there anyone wishing to speak before the commission? Please state your name and address for the record, and then if you'll fill out one of those blue forms, please. Thank you. Sure. Hi, my name is uh, Khalid Rifak. I'm the vice president of JNK Enterprise, uh, 4345 Southwest 29. Uh, just continuing, I have a comment on the discussion we were having earlier about the uh, charter. What this charter approval does now is, now these char uh, shuttle vehicles, what they can have now is a timer rather than a meter. So let's say you need a ride to the Walmart, the shuttle can pick you up, start the timer, drop you off, this is how many minutes it is, this is how much it charges. So you can have now shuttles all around town running like taxis, the only difference being them having a timer. In fact, you can have people on motorbikes running charter businesses. They can just have a flat rate of $15 an hour, come hop on, I start the timer. Whenever I drop you off, this is how much your total is. So the charter, it needs to be addressed. We need to know what this charter thing is because if it's some new business, I'd love to do that business myself. But we just need to understand what it is. Uh, as far as I know, only thing that I've heard of charter business is buses and uh, airplanes. I have never heard of a seven-passenger van being chartered. Uh, we do have seven passenger taxis that are available for the same job. Someone needs to go from their home to the Walmart, they call a taxi. Taxi can wait on them uh, as long as they want. But now I think what I'm seeing is we want to bring the shuttle business into the same game. Uh, we do have taxi stands. We don't have shuttle stands, but they can just park anywhere and say, hey, I'm charter. On New Year's, they can show up in downtown and say, we're all chartering tonight. So this charter is a very vague thing, and it could be used in so many things. And the, when someone questions, they can just answer, hey, I'm chartering. So I just wanted to comment on that charter thing. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? I think. I think Khalid gave half of my business plan away because I want to tell the drivers that now they have a free beat, go have fun. That'll be easier for them to make more money in a slow economy now. Um, but I just wanted to add in the end that what you all did today is you opened all the doors. We've got taxis in our company, we've got shuttles in our company. 
up till now we had disciplined our drivers that when the calls come in, our dispatchers send the shuttles to shuttle calls, taxis to taxi calls. Now when we go back, it's open game for all. Hey, just send them. Don't worry about it. Someone comes from the airport, I need to go over here. Someone says, I need to go for grocery shopping over here. Give them a flat rate, send it. Because we took the ordinance and played with the words and we just said, that's it. This to and from airport and taxi, Oklahoma City, this has no meaning anymore. That's exactly what we did right we can, now. We can, go, we can only go by the ordinances. If there's no definition for shuttle or charter, we can't make one up. And I, I really resent the fact Commissioner Martin. you come before us, now I'm mm -hmm. talking, you come before us, tell us, act like we don't know what we're doing, don't know nothing about business, don't know how to operate a, a, a Kool-Aid stand. Commissioner Martin, that's very what I don't understand is if there is nothing about shuttles and Mr. taxis Zom, in the do ordinance. Mr. not interrupt Mr. Martin. If there is nothing about taxis and shuttles in the ordinance, how do we come up to this conclusion that for a shuttle, we don't need five vehicles before launching the company, but for taxis, we need five vehicles. How do we come up to the conclusion that shuttles are running to and from airport and taxis can run in the city, they can go two miles radius, half mile radius, taxis are installed with a meter, shuttles are not installed with a meter, taxis cannot share a passenger, shuttles can share a passenger. I understand all this. I don't know the answer. These are not okay. corporate business models. Because if they are, I mean? if they are, then we can go back and I can tell the drivers, hey, if you're a shuttle driver, pay this much and go into the city. Because on New Year's Eve, on other holidays, drivers would love to go over there because the shuttle drivers don't have the opportunity to make the money because airport shuts down at a certain time. Okay. Before today, I was under the impression a shuttle ran to and from the airport. I was informed that is not the case. So we're not, is that right? They're not required by ordinance to do that. So Mr. Mirjan, that, that can make a, be a business decision for him that he's not going to run any place other than the airport and his shuttles, but there's nothing in the ordinance that prohibits him from, from going anywhere in the city. Said, we've sat in this commission for years. I've sat on it for years. And to me, it, I was always under the impression, whether it wrong or right, that the shuttle was went, they picked up a person, went to the airport, took them from the airport to their home or wherever they wanted to go. That was the shuttle surface as I knew it. So as we stand today, shuttles can just run like a taxi? Well, no. Let's just be very clear here. And, and you made a few comments that I don't think are true. A shuttle cannot go and go on a taxi stand. We know that. A shuttle cannot pick up fares off the side of the road like a taxi can. We made it very clear that a taxi can be driving down the road, be waved, pull over, pick up a fare, and go. A shuttle cannot. We made that very clear. A shuttle is from point to point. A charter, in my opinion, would be a phone call to say, tomorrow at 2, I would like to have a vehicle here to do something, which is different than a taxi where I make a phone call and I say, can I have one now for three hours? Totally different function that I think maybe we do need to clarify in the future. But I would just be very careful by saying that you're going to have your shuttles go do what taxis do. And taxis have been allowed to allow pickup affairs at just driving down the road, we've said that's okay. Taxi stands, wait here, or a phone call, please come get me. Those are what we said taxis can do. Shuttles, we've made very clear, to and from spots, which would mean some sort of pre-notification of action. So just to clarify, that's where I think it's at right now. And I think that if we need to clarify in the future 
the definition of a shuttle or a charter, we can put that into ordinance. But as far as right now today, a taxi has this function. We've worked on it for three years of what a taxi can do, and we know what a taxi can do. We've known what shuttles can do, and now we're hearing that a shuttle can be a little bit more flexible, and maybe we do need to define that. So I think we just need to leave it at that, and we'll look at in the future and have council look and have the staff look and just see where it needs to go. But I think it's very clear a shuttle is not a taxi. I think it's very clear. I, I do understand that, Commissioner Kula. But 27 years, Mr. Lucas has been running a shuttle company. Not one, mm -hmm. but in the past one year since JNK Enterprises came, four companies. Mm -hmm. Three decades off, they've been running their shuttle company to and from airport. In which you've said... Look at their website. And, and, and here's the point. Let's go back 30 minutes ago. I asked specifically, are they asking anything in this application different than what's going on now? And you said no. So there is no difference. Nothing has changed. You, I asked you specifically, can that shuttle service do a charter service? And you said yes. So therefore, they weren't doing anything different. So I think we just need to leave it and see where it's going. That's my recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Item number seven, reports from on other items and traffic commissioners, committees, staff, and the municipal councilor's office. Commissioner Witcher, Witcher. I have nothing to report this month. Thanks. Commissioner Martin. Our traffic around Cleveland Elementary is, uh, is going to be better this week because school's out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they're making progress and we're working through it. So uh, other than that, uh, I will say my farewells to everyone. If I didn't get here early to talk to you before, I, uh, before, uh, before the commission meeting. So I uh, enjoyed it, learned a lot, met a lot of good people, and uh, you all do good work. It's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you for your service. Commissioner Kula? Yeah, I'd just like to ask the staff to look at this one issue about shuttles and chartering and see what the rules are and if there's something that needs to be changed to please come to us and let us know. Thank you. Commissioner Hale. Commissioner Shuline. Commissioner Jenkins. Board aid is vacant. Commissioner Clayton. Stuart. Okay. You've got our monthly report on parking restrictions, uh, yield sign installations, and because it wasn't, because you didn't have uh, hard copies at the last meeting, we've included the letter that uh, Ms. Paula Yako submitted to the last commission meeting, just so you've got a hard copy now for your, for your information and for our records. Ms. Jackson. Okay. Thank you. Captain Martin. Uh, we had received Prior to this meeting, uh, item B on the consent docket, and just want to let you guys know we'd already state, started taking enforcement action upon that because of the hazard it poses, so just in case you're wondering. With that, I think we've reached the end of the agenda. Once again, I'd like to thank Commissioner Martin for his years of of service and uh, all he's done to represent Ward 2. Do I have a motion to so, adjourn? With that, we are adjourned. Thank you.